Hi, this is Professor Scott Norman uh, at uh, Pittsburgh State University. Um, as I am learning how to operate um, uh, video uh, lessons uh, because of the coronavirus, uh, I found out that when I'm videotaping outside, if it's windy, uh, you're able to hear the wind. So uh, today it was really windy. So I moved uh, to the um, to the shop of uh, PSU to, to to go through our next lesson. Uh, this week our students are still studying ethanol, and so I brought in my 2003 Yukon. Uh, and um, when you open up the uh, filler cap, um, it's a black filler cap, so you notice well it doesn't look like it's running on E85. But if you look over here at the um, at the cover where it's all black and dirty, and if you kind of scrape off all the dirt, you, it does say that it is an E85 vehicle. And so, so um, on this particular vehicle, there's no badging whatsoever that says that it's an E85 vehicle, a flex fuel vehicle, but it is. And so there's some interesting differences between, let's say, a GM uh, flex fuel vehicle and, let's say, um, a, a, a Chrysler. Uh, on this particular vehicle, if you take a look at the uh, owner's manual, and if you read through it, it doesn't say anything about anything special you have to do switching from uh, E85 fuel versus regular gasoline. And the reason that, that is, is because this vehicle has a fuel uh, alcohol sensor in it that it will sense the level of, uh, of the alcohol content in the fuel and it will adjust the uh, fuel trim accordingly. And so, so, then, so then that makes it really easy. If you're at half a tank, three quarters of a tank, um, uh, it, it just doesn't matter that the system is able to figure out how much alcohol content it has and adjust the air fuel ratio accordingly. You have to remember that regular gasoline has a, um, has a stoichiometric uh, ratio of 14.7 to 1 versus ethanol, uh, E85, uh, it could be down as low as is, is 9 to 1. And so you're going to use a lot more fuel uh, on, on, on E85 than you would with the regular gasoline. Now, on the, um, on the Chrysler products, my, my wife had a 2002 minivan, so I happened to get out the owner's manual on the 2002 minivan, and it, and it has very, very specific uh, times in which you can switch over from either E85 or gasoline. And, and it recommends you not just going filling up one day with E85, one day with gasoline, one day with E85, one day with gasoline. That's the worst scenario ever. Uh, what you want to do is that you want to run gasoline, and if, and if you're going to run gasoline, run gasoline. And if you're going to switch over to E85, you can do that, but you have to do it in a very specific sequence. And so what the owner's manual says is that do not fill up if you're below half a, a, a one quarter of a tank. You also want to make sure you add more than five gallons of fuel at, at any given time. And you also want to make sure that you run the vehicle for five minutes after you have filled it up. And the reason that is, is because on the, um, um, on the Chrysler products, there is no uh, alcohol fuel sensor. What it does is, it, is that um, the computer will guess, let's say, uh, it will make a good estimate that, hey, you went to the gas station, the car is off, it saw the fuel level rise pretty good, you know, more than five gallons, eight gallons, 10 gallons, whatever it was, and you start it, and what's happening is that it's watching the O2 sensors, and it sees that this that the system um, is starting to run lean. So it's, it's seeing all the oxygen, a lot more oxygen um, uh, in the exhaust because the E85 is an oxygenated fuel. So, so not only does the engine have the oxygen from the air that we breathe, but it's also getting oxygen from that fuel. And so it starts out at 14.7 to one fuel ratio. And as it sees those oxygen sensors go lean, short term and long term is going to start going up and it's going to start adapting. So it's going to start going up plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. It's going to start going up. And so if it starts going up all of a sudden, after it's seen a, um, a, a fill of the tank, it assumes that, uh, that uh, you have put E85 in it and then it will start increasing the pulse width and start changing the stoichiometric to run on E85, which will then bring those adapts back down to a normal value. So the question I get from my students a lot of times is, um, what happens if my mom, my sister, my brother, my uncle, whoever, accidentally puts E85 in a vehicle that doesn't run with E85, okay? And so that could happen on occasion, you know, you see, you see those uh, gas prices, and, and of course E85 is a lot lower typically than a regular gasoline, so if you're not paying attention, it's easy to uh, put it in. Well. The first thing that would happen, again, now there's a lot of different scenarios depending upon how much fuel you already have in your tank, 
but probably what would happen on a normal day is that you would get going down the road and the system would start adapting. It would start uh, seeing that there's, a, that there's a lot of oxygen in the fuel and uh, it will start raising the uh, pulse width and the adapters start gonna go up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher to a point where it'll probably turn on the check engine light and set a lean fault code, okay? And so, you know, so, so, so that's probably the easiest thing that would happen. Uh, it could go so lean that you could probably start misfiring, which would be maybe um, a, a more severe problem. If you have a lot of E85 in the tank, and then if it's cold weather in, in the winter time, you have to remember that the E85 um, has a lot higher flash point than, um, than, than, than a regular gasoline does. The, it doesn't want to burn as well on a, on, on a cold engine. So let's say that you filled it with E85, you only live five miles from the gas station, and you, get, and you get home, okay, fine, and your car sits overnight, well, if you got a cold engine, and if you have cold climates, trying to start that vehicle is gonna be a lot harder to start, so the engine may crank over lots and lots and lots in order uh, for it to finally start. So it could be a, a, a hard starting when cold scenario. So, so I have three vehicles that have E85 in it, and I don't tend to run E85 in any of my vehicles, and the main reason why is that it's just not convenient. That, that there's not a, um, a gas station in close range in order for, for me to use the 85. And uh, when we have my wife, uh, wife's minivan, let's say that we uh, go down to Joplin, which is a half an hour from here, typically I'm not at the right fuel level that I need to be at in order to fill it up and switch it over. And just switching it over one time and driving all the way back to Pittsburgh, Kansas, just isn't worth it just for one um, uh, tank on that. 